we grew up in the um, segregated South. That everything was segregated. Everybody knew everybody on every street. It was a nice community, all black. The teachers lived in next door. Didn't think nothing of it. The um, they went to the same church. It was a real community. Everybody loved each other. When I got to high school at Winona, went to Powell Elementary School, we were past Jones Valley to go up a hill to Winona. So we got kept asking. Why we have to pass this perfectly good school to go to Winona? Why can't we go to this school, Jones Valley? Then the Southern Christian leadership came to terror. Dr. King, they came over a lot, they had dinner. And uh, before they came, we worked with Dr. Shellsworth, who said, well, we're going to integrate schools. And Floyd, I want your daughters to go. I want your kids to go. So the, some, the year before, in May of 63, we walked out of Winona and went down with the child's movement and demonstrated downtown and they arrested us. So it was me and my three older sisters, you had to be 14 to participate in the movement. And they put us in jail. We stayed in there for a week. During that summer, we went to the March on Washington and then they said, okay, who wants to go to, who wants to integrate a school? Uh, my parents had gotten a letter in the mail from the Board of Education, got two. The letter said that I was accepted to go to Jones Valley. The, they, the next letter for my, was for my sister. They said she was not accepted. So for a whole year, I went to Jones Valley. We went to the school early that morning. There was a big demonstration. They said all the kids walked out and their parents was there to demonstrate. So we walked home up, t up the street towards our community and they follow us on each side. They would call us names, throwing spitballs at us. All the students would come to the fence or come out and out the window and yell racial slurs, call me names, go home, go back where you come from. I wasn't scared because my father said, it's not me, it's them. And you need to forgive them for calling me names and uh, throwing spitballs because they don't know no better. But if you want to go to heaven, you got to forgive. And I wanted to go to heaven, so I forgave. They was shooting me with water guns and everything. When I go to lunch, prepared and sitting at the table, they will come by and just spit in my spoon. So I'll just have an, whatever fruit, uh, whatever juice for the day. And then there was never any physical violence. It was just a lot of taunting, calling names every day. These two, my two sisters, followed me by going to Jones Valley and graduating the year and then and next year after that. Because of the, of the sacrifice that Carolyn Louise King made, thousands of people through, what, five, six decades were able to enter. And that's a wonderful thing. But the point I like to always emphasize is that we, her direct bloodline, benefited. Oh, that's Caroline's just meaning me and her. Don't say anything, don't do anything to them. So we literally just kind of walked in. Hardly any, very little of the negative impact that had happened to her. So in other words, she humanized people. I didn't get into any altercation with anyone because daddy wouldn't allow that. Our father was a, a man of God, a man of the cloth, and he didn't allow it. If he said you don't do it, you don't do it. We grew up in an era where children listened to their parents, okay? And also did what they told you to do. But uh, I enjoyed my education at Jones Valley at the year I graduated. And I'm happy to say there were about 50 of us. And if you go out and you go by Jones Valley, uh, I think it was 2003, they named a the street after me and it's in front of the school down there. And every time I go back, I go by it since I've been here, I say, hi, hi my son. <laughs>